Welcome back to the channel. Now, like I promised that we are going to look at how to deploy a Kubernetes cluster from the scratch. All right. Um, and that is exactly what we're going to be doing in this all right, Kubernetes series. We basically want to see how you can deploy a Kubernetes cluster all right, from the scratch. Now, I understand that we, you know, we all know about, you know, different Kubernetes deployment tool or creation tool, um, like your EKS CTL, you have the COPS, you have EKS, you have AKS, you have GKE, all right? Now, all of these platforms or these tools actually are very, very useful when it comes to, you know, creating a Kubernetes cluster in a matter of minutes, right? But what we want to achieve in the course of this session is basically to expose us to what goes on behind the scene when you use all right all of these tools. So if I set up my Kubernetes cluster with EKS, for example, right, what actually does EKS does behind the scene? How does EKS all right create my cluster with the nodes and everything, right? So what actually happens behind the scene? And that is exactly what I want to show us, all right, in this series, okay? So we're going to walk through the process of creating a Kubernetes cluster from scratch, which means you're going to set up instances yourself. You're going to have to, all right, deploy all of the all of the components, right, that are, you know, present in the control plane. And of course, the components that are also present in the worker nodes, right? You're going to have to create all those things yourself, connect the nodes together, all right, you know, installing a different tool. So basically, the first thing we're going to do is to set up our EC2 instance on AWS, and then we go over to see how to set up what you call a container runtime, and then we see how to configure what you call a container network interface, all right, and then we can see how to now join the worker nodes, all right, with all right, the control plane for them to be able to communicate, and then we can start deploying our resources, all right, to the worker nodes, right? Let's get right into that. Now, before we begin, let's try to understand a little bit about the Kubernetes, all right, component, okay? Now, of course, we understand that Kubernetes is, all right, basically made up of two things. You have what you call the control plane, and you have what you call the worker nodes, right? Uh, for some people, they call it the master node, and then, of course, the worker node, right? But whichever it is, okay, there is the master node or the control plane, and then you have the worker node. Now, the the control plane, all right, basically, it's more like the, you know, the administrative aspect of your Kubernetes cluster, which means that is where quite a number of the decisions are actually made, right? So you can see the control plane as, you know, the HQ, right, of your Kubernetes cluster, Basically, that is where the port scheduling happens. That is where you, you know, you connect to, to basically manage your whole, you know, Kubernetes cluster and all of that, right? So the control plane is, you know, just, you know, and of course it has quite a number of components actually, and we're going to be looking at all of that. Now, again, I would like to just say something here that Kubernetes is not an entry level, all right, kind of skill. All right, because I mean, before you can say you want to delve into Kubernetes, you want to start doing Kubernetes, you must have, you know, at least you have, you must have a fairly, um, you, you know, knowledge of Linux, right? I think that is very important. And then, of course, you must also have been someone who has done quite a number of things, all right, with Docker. Because, I mean, the purpose of Kubernetes basically is to help you to orchestrate, all right, your containers, which means manage your Docker containers, all right, and all of that. So, if you don't have a good understanding of Docker, then Kubernetes might be, all right, you know, it might not be an easy thing for you, all right, to grasp, okay? So, I encourage that if you want to watch this and follow through, make sure you have, all right, a knowledge of Docker, make sure you have a fair understanding of Linux, all right, and all of that, and I think you'll be able all right, to follow along whatever it is that we're doing, all right, in this particular tutorial. Now, let's take a look at a few things about the control plane. Now, the control plane, all right, has four components that are very important, right? Four components that are very important. Number one, there's the Cube API server as one of the components that is present in the control plane. And then you have the HCD, which is more like the brain of the Kubernetes cluster, because I mean, the HCD, it's more like the database that stores all of the clusters, you know, configuration and everything about a cluster, basically, okay? 
Now you have the cube scheduler, all right? It's one of the control plane component that basically watches, all right, for newly created ports. If there's any ports that you want to create, the cube scheduler is responsible for assigning those ports, all right, and deploying them on, you know, on the appropriate node and all of that. And then you have the cube controller manager, right? Which basically runs all the cluster processes and of course, uh, things like that, right? Now, these are the four main components, all right, that you have at the control plane right now there can be other components but these are the four so you have the cube api server the scd the cube scheduler and the cube control plane now all of these are components that you have within all right the control plane okay and these components are basically referred to as what you call a static ports right now your api server basically manages you know communication to the cluster and then some other things right but these static ports all right or we can call them you know the control plane component are basically managed by what you call the kubelets right the kubelet is responsible for managing all of these cube api server hcd all right cube scheduler and the cube control plane Okay, it is the duty of the kubelet to basically manage all of these things, all right? So now that means you must have kubelet installed in your all right, control plane, all right, to manage all of these things. Because I mean, if any of these components should fail, it is the responsibility of the kubelet to basically, all right, bring them back up, right? So these four components are component that we need to find a way, all right, to install it, all right, on our control plane. Uh, control plane machine right now on the on the node all right on the worker node you have a few component as well that you need all right on the node um uh on the worker node basically so you have the kubelet you have the cube proxy and then you have what you call the container run time i mean when you schedule a job to be run all right on the node uh, on the worker node, I mean, it has to have a container runtime that would actually execute that job. Because when you're deploying any job into Kubernetes, you are basically deploying, all right, more like a Docker, con all right, a Docker image into the Kubernetes cluster. Basically, you're creating a port, and inside of that port, all right, it's going to run a container image, right? So you need to have a container runtime that will execute, all right, whatever image that you want to run within, all right, your Kubernetes cluster. So you need a kube proxy, which is more like, you know, the guy responsible for the networking and all of that. And then you need a kubelet, which is basically an agent that run on each node in the cluster and then make sure that the containers are running inside of the port. All right. Now, our major focus here is to see how we can install all of these components, connect these components together, all right, and see how we can actually bring up a Kubernetes cluster from the scratch, all right, with all of these components installed, connected together, and see how we can just deploy a simple, all right, Nginx image at the end of the whole uh, deployment. Okay. So let's get right into the meat of the matter and let's see how exactly these things can be done. All right, so let's get into it. So now I'm already logged in onto my AWS account, right? And I'm going to launch three instances. Okay, I'm going to launch three instances. But before we do that, also let's take a look at the requirement, all right, for installing uh, a Kubernetes cluster. And by the way, we're going to be installing a Kubernetes cluster using a popular Kubernetes tool called Kube ADM, right? It is used to bootstrap, all right, a Kubernetes cluster. And of course, it makes things a bit easier, all right, for us to, you know, deploy a Kubernetes cluster from the scratch, okay? But of course, it has a few requirements. I mean, here you have the before you begin session. And here it says, I mean, your instance must have a minimum of two gig, all right, of RAM. And then of course, two uh, CPUs or more, right? So that means this, all right, series, all right, it's not something you can do with the free tier, all right, of the AWS, right? So that means you have to go outside of the free tier. Is that okay? So you cannot use a T2 micro, for example, because I mean, the T2 micro gives you one vCPU and one gig of RAM. But here we are being told that, of course, the minimum requirement is two gig of RAM and two virtual CPUs. Okay. So that means, I mean, we have to go outside of the free tier. So 
I need you to take note, all right, of that. Now, again, another thing that I'll quickly like to show you is that we're using the Kubernetes version 1.30. Of course, I know that the latest version here is 1.31, but of course, we can stick to 1.30 just in case you want to upgrade, all right, to 1.31, right? It will be easier for us to lend that, all right, as well. But of course, our focus today is basically how to install this Kubernetes, all right, from the scratch. Is that okay? Now, let's see what we can do. So the first thing is to uh, launch our instance. I mean, that's the first thing we have to do. So we're going to come here and then I'm going to click on launch instances. All right. And I'm just going to call these, all right, K8, um, you know, control plane. Okay. So we're going to call that the K8 control plane. And we're going to be using Ubuntu. And of course, again, with the latest Ubuntu version, 22.04, that's what we're going with. And like we've seen in that requirement page, of course, T2 Micro, it's obviously not going to work. So here we can use a T3, all right, a T3 small. I think that will still help us to learn this thing. Now, a T3 small basically meets that requirement. So two vCPUs and two gig of RAM. I mean, and it's, all right, it's something we can just go with. I mean, to just basically reduce our cost, all right? Now here, I'm going to create a new key pair. And I'm just going to call this, all right, K8. Okay, um, scratch key. All right, so I'm going to call that key, it's scratch key, and then I'm going to create a key pair. It's going to prompt me to save that. So I'm going to save that on in my download folder inside of the training here, and I'm going to just, you know, basically save that key right there. So here, I'm going to um, select an existing security group. All right, but I don't have any security group just yet, right? I, I mean, the one I have here, is not what I want to use. So what do I do? I can actually go back to my home tab here, open the EC2 session again, and then I can come here to security group. All right. And I'm going to basically just quickly, quickly create two security groups. Okay. So I'm going to call this one control plane. All right. Control plane SG. Okay. So just copy the same thing here. All right, and I'm just going to basically add a simple rule and that'll be SSH, right? Just SSH. And I'm going to say I'm, I'm going to access that SSH just from my own IP right address. I mean, it shouldn't be open to everybody, right? We have to be security conscious. So here, I'm just going to give it a tag. I mean, just for identification purpose, right? And then I'm going to just create that. Now, I'm going to create another security group, all right, uh, for the worker node, okay? So here, I'm just going to say worker, all right, node. SG. So that will be for my worker nodes. And I'm going to just, you know, put that here, add another inbound. And of course, I want that to be SH, right, as well. So I'm going to say, all right, SH should only come from my IP, right, my public IP to protect my instances from any kind of intrusion, right? And then I'm going to create a security group. Okay, so now I have two security groups. So I have the worker node, I have this control plane, all right, security group. So I'm going to come back here. I'm going to refresh and I'm going to select these and then right here I can see that. So I'll select that. And of course, the gig that I have here is fairly enough, right? I don't think we need more than what we have here. So we can just leave these um, as is, right? So I'm going to launch instance. Okay, so now let's take a look. So we have the instance, all right, coming up, all right? So we have that running already. And I'm going to launch another instance, all right? Basically, I'm going to launch two instances, right? So I'm going to just say two here, and I'm going to call this worker, all right? So just call this worker node. And then you come here, select Ubuntu, the latest version of Ubuntu. And of course, we're going to use the same instance, basically. So it's going to be T3 small, all right? So, and then we select the key pair. And here, I'm going to select existing, but this time around, it's going to be the worker node SG, right? And then I'll say launch instance. So this is going to launch two instances for me, right? So I'm going to come back here, refresh this page. And here, I can just rename this so I can say worker node A, all right, and save that. And then I can say this one with uh, worker node B, all right? I mean, just to identify them, all right? And I can see that my instances are basically, all right, created. So I have the control plane, I have the worker node A, and then I have the worker node B, right? Now, that is the first step that we have taken, all right, in the right direction. Now, the next thing we need to do, of course, is to connect to these, um, you know, servers, right? I mean, we need to do some provisioning 
on these particular machines, right? So I'm gonna click on my control plane first of all, and then I'm gonna click on connect. And then I'm gonna grab this example right here. And then I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna rename this tab, all right, as control plane. Okay, so I'm gonna rename that like this. I'm gonna paste in my SH key that I copied or the connection string that I copied here. I'm gonna say yes, all right. And then let's see what happens now. So I'm gonna clear my screen. So this is my control plane. I'm gonna open up another one, all right? I mean, just to basically connect to all of the notes. So training, that's where my key is, all right? And I'm gonna go back here, go back to instances, all right? Grab the worker note A, connect to that, and then grab the SH key right there. So paste that here, and then connect again, yes. And of course, don't forget to rename your tab so that you can know which one you're working on. So I'm going to say this is worker node, all right, A. So I'm going to rename that. I mean, let's see if that is correct. Yeah, so that's worker node A. So I'm going to connect to this other one again, right here. So I'm going to click on connect. And then grab this example again, all right, clear your screen here before you leave. And then open up another tab, all right, and then go to where your key is downloaded. All right, so go to where your key is. All right, drop that here. And basically just connect and then you say yes, right? So expand it a bit to just basically look at the view. So this is more bold. So let's reduce that a bit. All right, let's increase this a bit so that I mean they can be the same size. All right, so I think they match now. So, okay, so let's clear the screen again. So this is going to be, all right, worker, worker node, sorry. I guess I'm kind of fast, right? So work in node B, all right? So I mean, we've renamed that also. So let's make sure the on the same level. Okay, so I think they're on the same level now. All right, so that's great. Now we have the control plane. We've connected to the control plane. We've connected to the worker node A. We've connected to the worker node B, all right? Now, of course, we cannot do this kind of a thing without going through, all right, the official documentation. I mean, that is very, very uh, important for us to follow, all right? So I'm going to go back here to this installing, and then it says here, it says you must disable swap if Kubelet is not probably configured to use swap. So we need to disable swap, right, on all the instances, on the control plane and on the two worker nodes, okay? So just copy this right here, all right, and then go back to the server. So let's start with the control plane. So we disable that. Uh, on the worker nodes as well, we disable that. On the worker node B, we disable that, all right, as well. So we have to disable, all right, on all of the instances okay now the next thing we need to do is to configure what you call all right the hosts uh basically on all of these um systems right so we need to configure all right you know the host uh, name basically so we don't want to use um this host name so we basically have to change all right that host name uh that we have right there okay now i'm going to basically introduce us to something so here i have some commands that I believe will be useful for us, all right, on how to do all of these things. So the first thing we've done is to do the sudo swap of hyphen A, so we've done that already, right? So now the next thing we need to do is to basically edit the host file, all right, to basically set up, all right, our host name, basically. So here, I'm going to come on the control plane, and I'm going to come here, and I'm going to um, just do sudo vi, all right, etc slash host name, Okay, um, so let's see that. So I'm going to change this. Uh, instead of using the IP address as the host name, I'm going to just wipe this off, and then I'm going to say this is control, all right, plain. Okay, and then you save this. Okay, and that is exactly what we need to do here. So now I can use this command here to basically set the host name. So I can just copy what I have here, all right, copy, and then drop it here, all right? And that will basically, all right, just set the host name for us. Of course, it's not gonna change almost immediately, so I can just quickly exit, and then I can connect back, all right, to basically see that, all right, in action. So here, I have my control plane, okay? So let's quickly do the same thing, all right, for these guys as well. So sudo vi atc slash host name, and then this is going to be, so let's call these, um, sorry, make sure you change to insert mode if it's in VI. All right, so this is going to be worker, all right, A. So let's call this worker A, okay? I mean, let's just use that. So save that, 
All right, so the same command that we copied earlier, so we can also grab the same command, all right, and drop it here. Of course, don't forget to change your name now. Mind, don't forget that that's in the control plane. So this is worker A, right? So let's save that, and then you can exit, all right? You can make back, I mean, just to, for some kind of refresh, is that okay? And there you go, you have your what? You have your worker A right there. So the same thing applies here. So sudo, all right, vi slash etc. I mean, slash O's to name, all right? And then you do the same thing also here. I mean, this is something that, you know, if we're using EKS, for example, I mean, we don't have to go through all of these, you know, stress, right? So, I mean, EKS does everything for us. Or if you're using POPs or you're using EKS CTL, automatically you have your cluster created in just about 20, 30 minutes, your cluster is up and running. But then doing it like this will actually make us to appreciate, all right, you know, all of those things that happen behind the scene are a lot better, all right? So, I mean... Of course, we're not going to be doing all of this every day in the workplace. I mean, in most environments now, we use uh, we use EKS CTL, we use you know uh, EKS, we use COPS, and you know all the other different uh, Kubernetes creation tool, right? I mean, it does that for us automatically, and then in 20 minutes you have your cluster created, all right, for you. You don't have to go through all of this, but then it is important in my own opinion that we understand exactly what goes on behind the scene, right? So that is why. We are going through all of this. So exit that and then reconnect again to basically just refresh. All right. So now we have the worker B, we have worker A, and of course we have the control plane right there. All right. Now, another thing that we need to do, all right, in our security group is that, you know, your Kubernetes actually requires some ports to be opened up. All right. There are some ports that needs to be opened up on the control plane and on the uh, worker node, all right, as well. So here we have the control plane and then we have all of these ports that we actually have to open up. For example, your Kubernetes API server should be opened up to all because, I mean, that's the entry point into your Kubernetes cluster. So that should be open to almost everybody, right? So we have to open it up. Now, the uh, this other port here is used by the etcd server or right, client API. And of course, the only resource or the only component that has access to that or that should have access to that is the kube API server and the etcd itself, right? And then you have your kubelet API, all right, which is, of course, it's available on this particular port number. And that should also be able to connect to itself and, of course, to the control plane, all right, as well. And then you have all this other one, the cube scheduler should be able to connect to itself, all right? And then the cube controller manager should also be able to con connect to itself as well. And then on the con on the worker node side, we have these three ports that should be opened up. Uh, you have your kubelet API that should be connected, all right, to itself. And of course, should also have access to the control planes, which means this, all right, worker node security group will be, all right, we, we know we'll have to connect to the security group, all right, of the control plane as well. The kube proxy, all right, should also be able to connect to itself and, of course, to, you know, your load balances and all of that. And then your node port services should be open to everybody, all right, that needs to connect to it, all right, as well. I mean, when you create a deployment and you want to expose your deployment using services in Kubernetes, there are three ways to do that. You can do that using the cluster IP. You can do that using the node port. You can do that using the load balancer, all right, as well. Okay, so let's see quickly how we can, all right, configure all of these in our security, all right, group. So first of all, we start with a control plane security group, right? So let's go there. So security group for the control plane, click on that, all right? And then we can open that up quickly in a new tab, all right? I mean, I'm going to do all of these things step by step so that I don't lose um, anybody, all right, as I do, all right, these uh, things, okay? So that we can learn, all right, as we go along, all right? Now, I'm going to come here and I'm going to say edit inbound rules. So let's add group. Now, the first rule we want to add here, uh, it's going to be, all right, so we go back to bots, so we can drag that here. So the first rule here is 6443, and that should be opened up to everybody. And the protocol here is TCP, right? So I'm going to come here, protocol is TCP, so paste that. And the port basically says everybody should be, you know, it should have access to, you know, it should, open, it should be open to everybody, right? So it's going to be all, right, zero, zero. And of course, we can give a description to these, all right, basically just to name that. So we can also copy this, all right, and then pull that right here. So that's the first one. 
So add rule again. So the next one that we need to add here is the etcd, right? So we can just copy the purpose, all right? Put that here, and then we can copy the port number, and that is a range, right? 2379 to 2380. So that's a range, right? So that's not a problem. So we can just put that here, and it says here that it should be accessible from the Cube API server and from the etcd, uh, all right, server as well. So what we can do actually is that here, instead of putting 00 or anything, we can actually go back all right here and open up our VPC, for example, all right? And then we can actually just check, uh, all right, the VPC CID, all right, that we're using. So we can use that actually to just, you know, manage uh, all of these. So this is this VPC that we're using, all right? And the CIDR is this. So we can grab this, all right, right here, copy that, and then we can come here and just see, well, it should be accessible, all right, from this IP. So that basically means the connection is what? It's internal, right? It's within, all right, the VPC, all right? So that's exactly what we're doing here, right? So we go another one, <clears throat> sorry. And then the next one is the Kubelet API, all right? And the port right here is this one. So we copy that, all right? And then we, okay, we don't need this again. So we can just close that. So we put that here. And that also says self and the control plane. So basically, it's going to be uh, more like the same thing. So we can just grab what we have here, copy that, and put the same thing here as well. Okay, I hope you're getting that. So here, I'm going to just copy all of these, right? And then I'm going to put it here, all right? So just to name it and to know what the port, all right, is used for. So let's add another rule. So the next rule here is the cube scheduler, right? So let's copy the name. All right, and then we basically just, sorry, paste it here. And the port is 10, all right, 259. So you copy that, drop that here. And of course, it's going to be from itself as well. So let's drop that here. So basically, we're saying that the connection is just, you know, within the VPC, right? So let's copy this one for the controller manager. And I had another rule. And then we paste that here and then it's basically just going to be what we have here and we drop that here of course don't let us forget the labeling all right we copy that and then we drop that right here now with this we have actually concluded all right the control plane uh configuration right so the control plane security group has been configured but there's one more thing that i actually want us to do actually right uh, which is to configure what you call icmp um icmp basically allows you know your instances to communicate with themselves right if you want to run a ping command right you can use icmp all right to do that so i'm going to come here and i'm going to say all icmp ibv4 and i'm going to say that that should you know come from the worker node SG. So which means all my instances or the nodes, all right, that I have categorized as my worker nodes in that security group, right, they'll be able to ping, all right, my control plane, all right, as well. So that's basically what I've configured here. So I'm allowing that from that security group, okay? Now, this is for the uh, for the control plane SG. So we save the rules here. And then all of the rules have been configured right here. So we can see all of that. I mean, this is the only one that doesn't have any labeling and this one also doesn't have anything but of course we can leave it like that now that is for the control plane right so we can close this and go back to security group and right here let's grab the worker node all right as well because i mean we have some ports that we need to open up all right on the worker node as well now on the worker node we're also going to do the same similar thing all right that we did all right with um with that so we're going to do that all right as well so let's see how we can go, all right, about um, that configuration, okay? So now we need to put all of this code as well. So the same thing that we did, all right, for uh, the worker node is also what we're going to do here um, as well. Is that okay? Now, let's go back. So security group, worker node, have I opened that up? All right, so here I have my worker node SG, and then I'll click on edit inbound rules. All right, so the same thing will happen here. And then I'm going to have the ICMP, first of all. And then, of course, that will be within the worker nodes as well. So they should be able to ping themselves. And at the same time, they should be able to communicate or ping, all right, the uh, the work, uh, uh, the control plane also, okay? Now here, let's look at the port. So the cube API should be able to connect to itself and, of course, to the control, all right, to the control plane, right? 
So we have seen that as well. So what do we do here? All right, so we can basically, all right, just, um, you know, just one minute. We can basically just grab whatever it is that we have here and just configure that, right? So here the Kubelet API, copy that. I mean, labeling is quite important. Okay, so work a node, right? And then had a rule, TCP, uh, so that is, sorry, oops. I mean, that's a mistake right there. So this is going to be, um, the port is what? Right, 10, 250, drop that here. And that is going to be 172 something, right? So 172.31.0.0.16, right? I hope I am correct, All right? So let's open the VPC again, just to verify that, right? So we can filter by the VPC and this one, and then we can go to VPC here, and I think I am correct. So let's copy this just for uh, clarity's sake, right? Just in case that we don't make any mistakes. Add the rules again, close that. And then here we have the 10 to 6, all right? So drop that here. And of course, uh, we're going to copy this. We're going to put it here. And the name of that is the queue proxy, right? So it should be connected to itself. Right, so let's do that here, and that is the cube. All right, the cube proxy um, service right there. Okay, so the last one that we have is the node port. Right, so let's copy that, and that is basically will be opened up to everybody. Right, so paste that here, and this is going to be opened up to everybody. All right, and the port is also a range. All right, I mean, so copy that from here. And then you drop that right here. So we've configured these, all right, as well. So, I mean, that is what we have to do. So we can save all of these rules, all right? So save that rule. So your worker node security group has been configured. The control plane security group has been configured. Now, the next thing we need to do now is to start, all right, installation on our instances. So the control plane, we have some installation that we have to run on the worker nodes. We also have some installation that we have to run, all right, as well. So let's go right into, all right, that, okay, as we wrap up, all right, this session. So in the next video, we're going to see how to start, all right, installing, all right, the things that we need to basically start up our control plane and, of course, to start up, all right, the worker nodes, all right, as well. So thank you, and I'll see you, all right, on the next one.